All right, y'all, what's going on? It's Combo Breaker 99 back with another video. All right, y'all, so I came across this article with an excerpt from Chael Sonnen's show discussing Valentina Shevchenko. And I usually don't listen or read Sonnen's thoughts on fighters, but I had to read this one since he was touching on WMMA and the flyweights. And I have to say that I agree 100% with him on this one. I really do. Uh, matter of fact, I was already saying this before I even read this article. You know, I was saying this post UFC 306. And, you know, I'm I'm glad that someone else, especially of high profile media, sees that Valentina's opportunity for a bigger fight here and bigger promotion was missed. You know, this was a missed opportunity, you know, again, especially for promotion for a bigger fight after a not so crowd pleasing performance. You know, um, Chel Sonnen, he kind of went in and gave his feelings on, you know, like he said, just something so simple that could have been done to uh, maybe lead up to something bigger. But yeah, Chel Sonnen, man, he thinks that Valentina Shevchenko made a mistake by not acknowledging Manon Fior after UFC 306. Uh, this is what he had to say, though. Um, Can I tell you what one of my least favorite parts of UFC 306 was? There was an alternate that flew in, weighed in just in case anything happened with Grasso Shevchenko. Manon Fior. At a minimum, it would have been nice if Valentina had mentioned her. I feel like it's clear that Fior is next. She was almost that night. And after the fight, Valentina went in a different direction. She wanted to thank Hunter Campbell and Dana White as opposed to call out an opponent. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Like, I agree with him right there, man, because this was an opportunity to put all eyes on you again as the champion and put all eyes on your opponent and together put all eyes on a big fight between the two for the sport of MMA, you know, especially WMMA. You know, it needs whatever promotion it's able to get. But yeah, man, Manon Fior, with everything she was going through as far as this buildup, and, you know, with all this other stuff going on, like, oh, Shevchenko might not show up. She might not take the fight. Even like Grasso was saying, I'm prepared for I'm prepared for Manon. I'm prepared for whoever, just in case Valentina doesn't want it. Because that was kind of like the drama going on, right? Like, is, is Valentina going to take the fight? Has she signed on? Who else is there? You know, so all the while, you know, Manon had heard this. So she started getting ready. She started sparring. She started training and getting ready. And then when Valentina signed on, she was still getting ready. So in the meantime, in case something happened, she signed on as a backup, right? So she signs on as a backup. She makes weight. She goes through the whole spiel. And then she flies out and actually gets a fight kit and shows up cage side. Well, I don't know how close, how, how close, but um, yeah, she shows up. She's there watching the fight, right? But there's never any acknowledgement of her, you know, not from valentina's team or her manager or dana white or not even on the big screen saying hey this is the next opponent that wasn't even something they were even putting out there you know like this girl is number one contender and she is undefeated in the ufc and she's eyeballing the champ right now you know or she's eyeballing the winner of this fight you know so a lot of stuff was missed right there i mean these are my thoughts right here but yeah i agree with him because like he said that was just like a missed opportunity you know we feel we know and feel that okay Fior has done enough and she is next. But yeah, Valentina just kind of went in a different direction. But this is what else he had to say. He said, you were a main event here after this very, you were a main event here at this very event one year ago against the same opponent for the same title. And then they demoted you to co-main event. At some point, you got to wake up. The crowd wasn't thrilled with this match. If they were to do it again next year, it's going to come down lower and lower. I felt for Fior, you know, to come over there, get licensed, go through all the medicals, go through the training camp, the weight cut, and there's no opportunity, which means there's not a very big check to split up with your team. At a minimum, you could have had a call out on a human level to a degree. It bothered me. Okay, so yeah, I, I agree with him on that. Like, it did bother me that night because after that fight, after that fight, I felt like there was going to be some type of acknowledgement. I thought maybe like Dana White would have set something up, you know, with Manon's manager and her team. Or, you know, I, I felt like, you know, uh, Valentina's team would have said, OK, this is the next thing we're going to have her ready, you know, to get into the cage again, her flying out and getting the fight kit and everything. I thought even like the promotion would have said, OK, on the big screen, let's put her up here. They're putting all these other celebrities up here, you know, putting boxers and putting you know actors and things like that on the big screen. Why not put your actual fighter under your umbrella? That's next. That's what I'm saying. Even the UFC, they mess up sometimes, too, like. Y'all already know WMMA has a hard time. So why are you not taking the time to actually put these fighters up here? I mean, you put Tisha and Rocky up there. I know, okay, that's good, you know, because they got fights coming up, of course, you know, but 
how did you miss the opportunity of not putting the number one contender up there, Manon Fior? You know she needs to be promoted. So again, fight her under your own umbrella. That is a woman that needs to be pushed. Why not show her as being the next one? And again, yeah, she went through the whole thing. You know, she went through the process like she was fighting that night. So you could have said, okay, hey, this is Manon. She actually made weight. She was going to show up as the backup in case Valentino or Grasso uh, had to pull out for whatever reason, you know? So yeah, that was a missed opportunity. But then, yeah, again, you got to look at it for the winner. You know, you got to look at how it makes Valentina look at this point. Okay, I know she was happy to get her belt back. And, you know, she's never really been the type of fighter to just call people out. But maybe at this point she has to, you know, because like Chelsea Hunter said, last year, you know, you were the main event. This year, you were the co-main event. And then the following year, you might be just a UFC fight night main event with Manon now. Like that was kind of a missed opportunity. Now you might not be co-main event when you you uh, defend against uh, Manon on a pay-per-view card. It might just go straight to a fight night. So that was kind of a missed uh, missed opportunity on her part. Um, and especially after the performance she put on, like, again, good on Valentina. She went in there, dominated, exposed Grasso's weakness, and she got the belt back. I'm all about a fighter getting their W back. You know, I'm all about get them getting their strap, however they got to do it. But you got to still think of the crowd. You still have to think of the entertainment value and the promotion here. For Valentina, going in there, doing what you had to do, you already know that the crowd is probably going to feel a certain way like this wasn't no barn burner like this wasn't no back and forth action-packed fight so if you know that you're going to go in there and execute a game plan which i have no problem with you have to kind of make up for it so once you get that belt back you have to say okay i'm ready i just got it back and now i'm ready to do something big you know i'm ready to take on this next generation of flyweights and i heard there's a certain girl in the crowd that made weight and she flew out and she has a fight kit and she was coming in as my backup. Now, could you bring her to the cage? You know, they, they could have done something like that, you know, or they or like the team could have talked to a Manon and they could have said, hey, uh, all right, Manon, this is your chance. You know, she could have said, OK, once everybody's cleared up out of the way, you know, Joe Rogan does his little uh, you know, interview. Let Manon get inside and, you know, let her face off. You know, they did that with DDP and Izzy, right? Whenever, you know, they were supposed to fight a while back, right? They, they do that with boxers all the time, you know? So they do that. They, so they should be able to do that with this uh, this type of situation. And again, too, even like even like Joe Rogan didn't really say nothing. You know, Joe Rogan didn't say, okay, what's next? Um, I know there's a young lady that came all the way from France. You know, she was ready to be your backup. Um, would you like to acknowledge her? What do you think of her right now? Uh, hey, let, let's get her in the cage. You know, Joe always flexing like he got power or something. You know, like he got all these followers and stuff. So why couldn't he set up anything? You know, all these people here, you know, why couldn't they really set up anything? Huh? So again, that's one reason that WMA just doesn't get that proper promotion. You know, they got to they gotta step their entertainment value up. You know, they got to step it up and make people really tune in to find out who they are. You know, especially for the hardcore fans like me, like, I wanted to I wanted to see a handle like boxing, like when Shane Mosley got in there and disrupted uh, Floyd Mayweather's victory. You know, it, it pissed Floyd off that night. You know, and that's what I like to see. It made the next fight. You know, and it made the next uh, it made the next uh, build up for for Floyd's fight to be exciting. You know, so I think the same thing could have been done here. You know, for the WMA fans, we could have been excited, and then the new people that don't really know who Manone is, they would have been like, oh, okay, who's this girl? She towering over Valentina. This girl's serious, you know, just just little things like that that they missed, you know. So, yeah, I, I agree with Chell on this one, man. Like, you were main event last year and now the co-main event. And that's the thing, like, the performances of Valentina, okay, they are satisfactory. You know, she's technically one of the best fighters in the world. Definitely don't knock that. But as far as the entertainment part um, and build up, building up for WMA, I know she's got to be respectful, but this could have still been respectful. This is still a part of the respect. Uh, this is still a part of uh, being respectful in the game, you know, acknowledging that opponent that worked just as hard to get up there, you know, showing that the, showing that you want the best and letting the fans know that you're hungry again. So instead of, you know, thanking Dana White or Hunter Campbell, yeah, I definitely would like to hear Valentina say, you know, I got my belt back. This is the close out to this trilogy. Let's move on. I know y'all guys are tired, so I'm ready to take on this new crop get Manon up in here you know I heard she been calling me out get that French girl up in here like they always say you know and, and even on Manon's side 
they should have set something up for her to be ready to storm the cage and get up in there and, and make that call out. But yeah, I agree with Chael on this one, guys. I mean, what do y'all think? Um, I'm still definitely going to tune into the fight. But yeah, I just think that, yeah, that's kind of like a thing, like Chael said too, like, it, it kind of bothers me. It just kind of bothers me. Like, man, you, you, you missed something, you know, you missed the opportunity to, um, get, get a, you know, get a bigger fan base too. you know, get those casuals there, you know, get that, uh, male demographic that gets up and goes to the bathroom during your fights. You know, you, you could have, you could have won them over that night by uh, making that call out, made them say, Oh yeah, I got to see this. These, these two right here facing off. Oh man, this, this, this look tough. They, this girl's huge. You know, they look like they got bad blood right now. Look like they want to fight right now. You know, just things like that. Things like that. I feel like they missed. But uh, yeah, guys, that's all I got on this one. I just kind of wanted to acknowledge that and get my thoughts on, um, yeah, that missed uh, promotion there for uh, Valentina and WMMA. But what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Make sure y'all subscribe. Hit that like button. Combo Breaker 99. It's WMMA Talk. I'm out. Peace.